Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayro and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today's video is a video that a lot of people have been waiting for, which is how I make my illustration from photos. I'm using Clip Studio Paint to do most of my illustration works, whether they're from photos or just the graphic design that I use. And I'm gonna be using Clip Studio Paint for this tutorial. If you do not know Clip Studio Paint, well, a few years ago, I didn't know either. I actually saw them when I got my Wacom tablet and it offered me some, you know, free options, like free programs that I can use because I purchased a Wacom tablet and Clip Studio Paint was one of them. The infrastructure, as well as a lot of the things that you can do with Clip Studio Paint is very similar to Photoshop, although coming from trying to master Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint kind of feels more native to me and more natural, which is why I prefer using it to Photoshop and why I have never actually invested any time in studying Photoshop or any kind of, I don't know, Adobe programs. However, the technique that I'm showing you about how to illustrate from photos, what I'm using, can be done with Photoshop, with Illustrator, with pretty much any software that allows you to take a photo, make layers on top of it, and design a layer on top of it with any kind of line, whether it's consecutive or a drawing pen. So what I'm doing in most of my drawings is sort of like trying to draw what I'm seeing. I sort of like make the outlines of what I'm seeing, which you can later on use as coloring pages. And then I color it inside either with watercolors, oil colors, just by clicking and filling out colors, as well as sort of blending the photo below to make it look like an oil painting or a watercolor painting, which we've had a tutorial about earlier in this channel. Throughout this tutorial that I'm about to show you, I'm just gonna show you the system. And once we're done with the system, I'm gonna show you other things that I've done using this system and different methods. And we're gonna be talking a lot more about what you can do with it and how this reflects on you, whether you're selling on Redbubble, whether you're selling printables on Etsy, whether you're making personalized items, whether if you wanna, I don't know, stop selling clip art. There is just so much that you can do with this system to help you grow your business and get more creative and sort of cheat your way into making illustrations. Because when I first started it, I remember if I wanted to make like an illustration of a fashion girl, I wouldn't be able to just draw it for my head. And even drawing it and sketching it myself seemed a bit difficult. So I would just take a photo of a model, obviously photos that you can use for these kind of purposes, like photos from Pixabay, and sort of draw on it. And when I'm saying you can use photos from Pixabay, you can't take photos from Pixabay and just resell them or print them on print demand, but taking photos from Pixabay and drawing on top of them and then selling what you draw on top of them is completely legal and completely okay. As well as, you know, taking photos for yourself, taking photos of dogs, having photos sent to you from clients and then drawing on top of them and making these illustrations. While I'm making this tutorial, I would like to remind you all that even though I've been getting kind of a lot of compliments on my design skills, I'm far from being a very talented designer or illustrator. This is really not my ballpark. And I'm not saying this to humble myself or to get you guys to flatter me about anything that I do. I just want to tell you this because it is this simple when you stick to this system of drawing outlines and filling them out. For this tutorial, I'll be using my trusted fella here, my welcome into us. I don't know which one it even is, into us CTL and my little pen, which I really like. I got it, I think, two or three years ago when I got back from Bangkok and I was so lost in Israel and I just started drawing. So I just started a few years ago and I'm, I haven't taken any courses. I just watched a few YouTube tutorials, pretty much the same YouTube tutorial that I'm doing right now. And just to get you into the system, while I will not be designing a lot of the items you've seen on our Facebook group and on the community tab or on Instagram, these all were drawn and made within the same system. So what I want you to take from this video is the system that I'm using and the technique rather than actually, you know, just having a look at multiple, multiple designs. I'm going to do one complex design from a flower that has sort of like these weird lines in it, as well as a more easy design using a corgi, which is super cute and actually came out quite nice. And I'm actually thinking about making like more illustrations like of all dog breeds and sort of selling them as clip art because I don't know, kind of feels like cool to me. But before we get started, three small announcements. One, if you're watching this video as a live premiere, welcome. I love making live premieres and I love our live chats on this side. 
I'm betting it's gonna be on this side because my camera keeps, keeps flipping over, but it's gonna be on this side here. And the reason why I'm able to connect with you guys on these live chats and write back to you while I'm talking is because this is not a live YouTube video. Live YouTube premieres are a feature by YouTube that basically allow the creator of the video to upload a pre-recorded, pre-edited video onto YouTube. And for the very first time that it's being watched, we get to watch it together and have this live chat. Once the YouTube premiere is done, it just transforms itself into a regular video. If you want to make sure not to miss out on live premieres because you, you can actually ask me questions during the live premiere or just, you know, chat it out. If you want to make sure not to miss out on live premieres, you can check out my Instagram story at may.royo, which is also kind of filled with photos from Bansker right now because I'm really, really having fun with nature here. It's awesome. So you can check out my Instagram story at may.royo. You can check out the Facebook group as well as the community tab on YouTube. If you have subscribed to the channel and activated the notification bell and have notifications on your YouTube app on your phone, you will also get a 30 minutes notification before any live premiere. The second announcement is about the end of the month shop reviews. You have a link down below to a Google form where you can just submit your shop. The next shop review is going to be about Etsy shops, printables, as well as print on demand. But I'm also going to be reviewing a lot more shops on June. So keep on coming with Redbubble, Society6, Teachip, Public, Shopify, whatever shop that you have. The link is down below. It's an anonymous submission of your Etsy shop or your Redbubble or Society6 or whatever shop that you have. But you can also add your name and a few more words if you want to, I don't know, tell me something about it or let me know what you thought behind this shop, what you have planned for it, or if you're looking for any specific advice with this shop review. The third announcement is actually waking up this morning. And I woke up this morning and there were so many messages in my inbox. And I was opening one of them and it was one from one of the channel's viewers. It was like, you reached 2000 subscribers. So I'm, guys, I'm so happy here. I can't even describe it. I was like, watching this and this was like five or six in the morning and I just start putting music here in the apartment and dancing all over the place and I hope my neighbors don't hate me right now because I was just so happy because I thought that reaching a thousand subscribers after three and a half months would be amazing but honestly reaching 2,000 subscribers after four and a half months on YouTube feels kind of unreal to me. <laughs> this is so insane guys really this is uh, I'm I'm so thankful for whatever drove me to finally start this YouTube channel because I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel for the past four years. So thank you guys. I, I have no words. So I'm going to start right now before I'm going to get mushy and my mascara is going to run off. And I'm going to take you to my screen where I will show you my technique of basically illustrating from photos. I'm just going to quickly go here and start with the first one. And I'm just going to right click on it and open it with Clip Studio Paint, which is the software that I'm using. I'm using the Wacom Intuos tablet that I love and that you've seen before. And what I want to do now is when I'm looking at this system about Clip Studio Paint. So what I want to do now, the first thing is to make sure that I have a good layer to work on. And I don't like working on this layer, obviously, so I'm going to add another layer. So whatever I'm going to do, whatever I'm going to draw, whatever I'm going to design is going to be on a different layer. So we're going to end up with watching what I've done. And what I'm also going to do is add another layer. And I usually prefer to color this in sort of like a color that doesn't appear in the photo. So I'm just going to color all of it and then reduce the opacity. Basically, what I'm trying to do is make it more clear to me where the lines are. Because if I'm just looking at this photo, maybe something might be confusing, the colors are mixing. But with this layer on, it's easier for me to see. So what I'm going to do is I have two options when I'm doing illustrations. I can either do them like sort of like freehand, which means I'm going to zoom in a bit and basically try to draw my way around this. I can sketch it. I can create firm lines. I can make the lines not attaching and basically creating a frame from everything that I'm seeing. So I'm creating like every basic line that is in the photo every time a color changes. I'm basically going over it, but I don't like this system as much. What I prefer doing is actually find you know, these lines that are continuous curves so that they will go along with me. So I can basically sketch around it as I go along. So for example, if this line sort of starts here, then I will go over this line like this and sort of like make my way around the lines here that are visible to me. Okay. 
can sort of create them first with this continuous curve and just move along as I go and really try to make sure that I get everything done. And this could take you a long time, this could take you a short amount of time, it depends how fast you are, how practiced you are. I really think that the more you practice, the better you get at it. And for sure, I know like about myself, I've become way better with time than I had when I just got started, even though it is incredibly different doing this while also explaining. And you can go into bigger details, smaller detail, depends on your artistic style. Like I know that a lot of people might think that, you know, if I can't do the firm lines, the smaller lines, and no one's going to want it. But in fact, a lot of people do prefer like sort of like minimalistic art of some sort. And what we're doing here is not even, you know, it's not even a person. It's a flower. But what we can do with it is sell it as like a drawing. You can make a full on drawing from it. You can make a coloring page from it. It's just the system that I really kind of like about, first of all, like emphasizing all these lines to begin with. Let me just get it done real quick before we move on to the phase of coloring it while you listen to some awesome music. So this is what I got so far and there are a few things that we can carry on and do from here. So one of these things is for example, so this is sort of the flower and we've had this alignment next to it. So if I make all the layers go away and I'm just going to add a new layer and I'm going to color it all in white and put it below, we have this. I'm just going to quickly duplicate this layer up here and what I can do is combine these two layers, merge them together, choose the invisible color, and basically delete this around it. And this is only possible if I made all the lines connected. And sort of like this would be an element of its own. Another thing that I can do, let me just duplicate this a million times. Another thing that I can do is go back to the original one. And basically what I'll do is I'll choose the color white and I'll color the surroundings of this layer. And I'll be left with this. And what I can do to this layer, also let's duplicate it, is reduce the color. Then what I'm going to do next is create another layer. Again, color it in white. And what's going to happen is that this layer will be beneath this layer. I will combine all the layers together and color this 
behind it and we sort of have like these colors here another thing i can do is work with the blending tool and sort of like mush the colors of the layer under it but this is like way too much the clicking sounds are actually from my tablet and sort of like mash all the colors here to create sort of like this rough kind of illustration to it this is actually one of my favorite techniques but you really have to pay more attention to it than what i'm doing now because i'm working with a really really big size blending tool you can work with smaller ones for the smaller lines i just kind of I think I kind of like to go over it because it gives it like a very unique kind of look, especially if you want to use it later on for print on demand. And it's not just, you know, it's not something that someone ordered. It's something that you want to make as a painting or something to use as inspiration. I do remember doing it like I did it with a flower vase, I think two years ago. And then I put that flower vase on, on top of uh, greeting cards. I think it was sold as a wall art. But mostly I used it for greeting cards for like get well soon. It was actually kind of pretty. I'm going to try and find it to show it to you later on. But I did it basically the same way. I just started coloring things inside after doing the sketch work from around it. And it's sort of like this artistic more, I think, painting to it. And I do know a lot of people who like this artistic kind of style. It's not for portraits, maybe, although it could work on dog paintings and cat paintings. Obviously, again, with a smaller blending brush that really go along with the size of the painting, because I'm using a really large one, like 120 pixels is a really, really big, big brush. And what I'm going to do now that I've blended everything is basically pretty much do the same, because I'm going to go the first layer, color everything around it in white, and then I'm going to sort of like merge these two together and then color the surrounding like this. And this would be my element. This will be my element of design. But another thing that I could do, let's just go quickly up to here again, duplicate this one. I'll go to this layer and I'll color everything around it in white so it will be easier for me to see what I'm doing. And then create a layer behind it. And then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to one of my watercolor tools I have oil paint here that I can also use, and I have watercolor, I have like realistic water brushes, I have Indian ink, which is one that I really, really like, but not for this tutorial. Let's go with just smooth ones and sort of grab everything here based on this color and layer it all around. I can choose a bigger size of a brush because this will be like my base color. I'm gonna make this layer go away. Add a new layer, choose the white colors with a smaller brush and sort of create everything that I need to create in white. Obviously, again, when you do it, you pay a lot more attention to it than just, you know, what I'm doing now. Just going to kind of go over everything I remember or think should be white, everything that uses a lot of white colors and a lot of white elements. Just kind of go over them. Don't be afraid to get out of the lines on the sides here for the very simple reason that there is no getting out of the lines. Like I, once I made the layer on top of it, white around it, like the color paint around it, it's not going to come out, even if I'm going to make it with red in a second. I'm just going to go over like the edges, the layers, and just, uh, my technique is very rough. Like I like to do things very firmly. And very like abstract adding another layer to the mix and this time i will go with choosing the red color and a bit of a, of a bigger brush sort of create like these red spots whenever i see like the red somewhere here i can also choose a smaller size find a more vivid red or pink and sort of combine it with it Take it all the way wherever I see red spots. Just try to go around it, go over it, emphasize it a bit. And you can do it with all the color schemes and you can pay more attention to it or less. And then I'm going to activate all the other layers and sort of align them. So this would be my base and then we have the white and then we have the red. So the red is on top of the white. And I can work my way around it, make it more red. And obviously, again, this. This all depends on how much attention to details 
you keep at this point if you color within the lines with outside the lines if you want to make this more artistic or more realistic it's totally totally up to you you can add the white on top of it and just make whatever you want from it and one of the other things that I like doing you can also just pick one of these go to your layer place it down below color in white basically color this layer here on top of it in white color the layer below in white and let's make this one just go away and what I can do is I can try to work within the parameters of what I sketch so for example let's color this line in blue which is a color we don't have right so we're going to color this layer in blue so it's going to show me here and then while working on this layer the layer of the flower I can try and choose like places that are sort of white that are together just kind of go over them and this if you do your sketch work very good like if, if you really put your time into making sure all the lines are connected because in this case you see like we have a lot of things that are not connected together if you do all this work really well then it's going to create smaller segments that you can actually color and then let's go with pink hot pink and just you know go around and color the inner parts I didn't pay much attention to the inner colors when I was doing it. I kind of wish I would have done it more now. But you can really try and color like just the ins of things. And the blue is obviously going to go away. The blue is not in a layer here. Let's sort of like give it some, give it some character, as you'd say. Maybe even, no, not this. Like this, for example. And then, these two, I think I remember, were green. They were like these stems that things come from. They were a bit green. Then we can go back to our pink. Let's just choose the same one. And go to a bit of a brighter one. And just go over the blue parts and color some of these as well. And let's choose another very hot pink color the rest of the blues and just create a whole kind of different color scheme to it I guess and this is obviously when you're not doing something that is meant to be realistic I mean not something that someone ordered and said yes I want exactly the colors that I have in this photo so this would be my flower and this is one of the techniques that you can be using. There are so many different options because as we've seen, like this was one of them. This was the second one. Let's just mix them all together. We had here some other options, if I remember correctly. This one, I guess. We've also done the white one. And you could also just flat out take the colors from the original drawing down below and use them and you can do this with multiple multiple things I'm just looking into some things that you could do that might make it easier for you because sometimes I like to do this technique and draw from actual different illustrations so let's find something like a dog illustration and actually type it incorrectly <laughs> so I have some visual illustrations here not really enough for what I wanted at this point. So let's just type in dog. And for example, if someone wanted, you know, a photo or a painting of their dog, like an illustration. Oh, I love corgis. I love corgis. Let's say someone wanted this dog in a photo. Let's just download it. And obviously when you're using these systems, when you're working on these things, I'm sorry for, I keep having to verify that I'm human. Um, obviously when I'm doing this I'm working on a specific size but when you will do it if you work with clients you're gonna have to ask them to send you like their biggest file size the best quality that they have and let's just grab this dog here crop it save it and open this with clip studio paint and again the first thing that I'm gonna do is add two new layers one that I'll add a different color to so I'm gonna search for a color that isn't in the scheme I can also just reduce the opacity of this and sort of add the layer of the color behind it in a way and that will give me also some clarity or view as to what I want to do 
it all depends on what is comfortable for you. I'm just going to go back to the black colors and go back to my main tool that I really like. And just with this dog, I'm just going to try and find, you know, the outlines or like the emphasis lines that I want to work on. And dogs can be a lot harder because they have all this fur and hair. So if you want to illustrate like a pencil painting, go ahead and do that. That is totally beyond my skills. But what I can do is the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the overall shape of the dog. And I'm going to go over the overall shape of the dog. And I'm going to start by going over this dog without the ears. And I don't know if you noticed, but I've chosen a really, really thick sort of line to go with. A lot thicker than what I would have wanted for different paintings. But I'm trying to sort of like make this like a character. So let's just go over. First of all, let's do like the white segments of it and just the outlines. I know it might sound weird, but it's going to look nice. And then we have this sort of layer that is on top of it. And just choose the white outlines. Let's go here. And then this one is a bit here. And this will not be like the most realistic portrait. If you guys can do realistic portrait, guys, do it. Go on. It's, uh, I think it's beyond my, my skills. But I do like making these sort of like weird caricature portraits because a lot of people like them, first of all, is they are very simple. You can like make someone, you know, a sticker from your dog or put this later on on socks or whatever with very rough lines. And also a lot of people kind of like them, you know, because they're kind of cute. Not everyone wants like the total realistic one. Some people like um, a bit of fun to it, I guess, because it feels like it's a bit more of a fun sketch kind of way. Let me just do this line all over again. And here we have like the fur. Let's put it in there and from the other side as well. One of these lines is connected here, and then we have the back of the dog. As well as in here. And this is like a very rough sketch of it. I think I'm saying the word rough a lot, which is kind of funny because it is a dog. Or at least it's funny to me. Let's try and see what we can do with this ear. And now I'm going to make this line a bit thinner. And I'm working with an eight point line. It's just because this photo is like really small. So I'm working with the inner, like smaller lines for the ears and for like the other parts of it. This could also be like a very nice coloring page. I think that I got the ear wrong. Let me have a sec. Like this. And I think I want to delete like this line just a tiny bit. Yes, good now. And now I can do, I can try and go to maybe six and work on this a bit. It is kind of hard to get facial expressions. And again, guys, I am totally not a master in graphic design. What I'm doing here is a technique I have not done in a long time. It's a technique that basically you just go over the lines. I mean, it is as simple as it is. You just go over the lines that you sort of see. And the more you get in depth in terms of the photo you're looking at, the more you try to do all these lines and really zoom in, the more realistic your design can be. And it's going to just be better than what I'm doing right now. We have the small line here, and then let's try to work on our little nosy. And everything I'm doing here is full lines. Like I, I'm trying to really make sure that I close all the lines so that if I want to color them with one stroke, I can just do it and it's going to work for me. 
we have to do the nostrils, I think. We left them in. Just circles like this. And some people also like to create like this, like the nose, even though I don't don't really like that option. Or like, you know, create like a line here. And now let's try and do the eyes, which is always a rough part for me. I'm really not good with doing eyes. I think let's just try to create first of all the circle. And then sort of like it was like this, I guess. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with and what you guys do. Because I know that from the viewers of this channel, I already know that there are a bunch of viewers who are far more creative and better at this than me. So I kind of want to see what you guys come up with. But it's just, you know, it's just the concept of something that you can be doing, of something that you could be selling that is a bit different than just doing, you know, regular print and demand. And what I want to do here is I'm going to basically color this all over. And as well as this. Just tapping on it multiple times. And I'm going to also go with white at this point as well because it is rather important for the eyes. I'm just going to do it with a pen. Like this and like this. Because the white was on top of the black and it is important. So I'm going to go back to the black. And I'm going to work on the inner part of the eye, even though it is going to be a little bit rough. So maybe not at this point. And now I'm looking at it, I'm trying to see what else I need. Okay, so I need thin lines, maybe to sort of go within the ear. Like this. No, I didn't make it full on. I want to really grab it from the get go, from the start, to make sure that the lines are attached. And you can also do this work with, you know, layers if you feel comfortable. I'm going to go and break it down into layers when I'm going to start coloring it. But you can start doing layers from pretty much any point. If you want to make it more realistic, more, I don't know. Let's do a very thin line here. Because we have sort of like this um, brighter color up on the nose. And we also have different shades for the fur. I'm just going to tap it here. As well as we have this same line here. Sort of divide the colors of the fur like this. So we'll be having it sort of like in sections, I guess. And then we have to do something with these legs and think how I want to do it. Maybe just differentiating like this and making, this is going to be really much of a character, not a very realistic one. And you can add the fingernails on top of it. You can delete this part and create legs better. But for now, this is what I've done. And I'm going to grab a new layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer multiple times so we can do different things with it. And I'm just going to grab this layer here. Let's grab the first layer, go to the color and color everything in white on the back of it. And what I'm going to do now is actually roughly just color everything. I'm thinking maybe I should have had another line here, but let's just color this, color this, color this. Let's find the whitest point. Color this. And color this. Let's dive deeper. Color this. And as you can see, this wasn't time lapsed, so this was relatively fast because I'm making this caricature and it's like a pretty basic one. Even like, you know, with the eyes and everything. So it's a very, very basic one. I just have to make sure that I cover everything up here because, again, as I said, these lines are very, very slim. And then if I get the color within these, sort of, let's grab the tongue, grab this, this here, this here, and this here, and this is our corgi. And I, how many, how much time did it take me to do it? I, I don't know. I think I did it rather fast. It was kind of nice, kind of simple, and I kind of really like it. And obviously, again, I can just, you know, color the background in this color. And I can make it a bit whiter, like if I want to emphasize like the brightness of it, 
So I can just change this up to hit this one and make sure I do not miss out parts. Like for example, here with the nose, this little bit came out wrong. And this could be an illustration of a corgi, the one that you, oh my God, I'm actually gonna save it, it's so cute. I'm gonna be using this one, I think. And another thing that you can do again with the colors here is I'm gonna create a new layer, is to go to this layer, put the opacity back on, and then work on the blending tool that we worked on before. And just, you know, start blending it together. Obviously, when you do that, you need to have a white point here, sort of like this. And then we just carry on blending everything. Now, if I want to blend and I don't want it to interfere, I can just color these in white as well and then work on these layers later. I can blend, you know, just the white to begin with because the white is the dominant one. And make sure to not blend, blend it too dark. And try blending it on the strong points here, here, the ears. And just give it sort of like a rougher vibe, I guess, with everything. And it's taking a lot of the pink because I have pink from outside the photo. I don't know if you guys remember. There is pink around here as well. That's why it's bringing in the pink, which I kind of like. I think it's kind of cool. And with the face, what you can do, if you don't want to blend it all over because it doesn't look good, is just go back to the first layer and color the things that are important to you so that they're not going to be full on blended. And then what we do is that we blend the bottom part of it so it doesn't really affect the upper parts like this sort of. And this if you don't want to work with like the slimmer blending tool. This is just another quick way of creating this dog illustration. We can add in some white if we want to blend it in with some white as well. So it's not going to be too too dark or too weird. We can also like just, you know, go back to the first layer and whatever is white, we're just going to decide that it's going to be white. And we're going to give some of these colors and leave it like sort of half blended. Um, I personally like this system. I think it's nice. I don't know what you guys think about it. But to me, this is something that I really enjoy doing. I would have done it a lot more, but it's a bit harder for me physically with a pen. It's a bit of a movement that is a bit harder for me than just, you know, normally sitting in front of a camera or sitting in front of the computer. But it is something that I like to do. And it is a good way to create these sort of like instant clip arts as well as coloring pages, because instead of coloring it, you could have just left everything empty and created this in a different way. And with that being said, let's get back to me and talk about the options that you have or what are the emphasis that you're gonna have to do if this is something that interests you in terms of creating art with these types of illustrations. And we're back to me. What did you guys think? Did you like this system? I mean, it's a system that I've been using for quite a while and I kind of enjoy it. And I just want to show you other things that I made with it. Like for example, let me just move this flower vase that I made basically from sort of like sketching all over it. This was very freehand sketching. And down below in the bottom layer behind it, I basically did a watercolor illustration, watercolor coloring based on the colors of the actual photo. I really love this design. I've actually used it for thank you cards when I was selling them on Etsy, as well as sold a few copies of this vase as a coloring page without the colors. That's why it's always important to save the work that you're doing just with the outlines and then save it again when you're doing the colored version and have both versions in case you want to change your mind and make it into a coloring page. I also made this set of animals that were made both with coloring options as well as with colors in them that I actually drew on top of existing graphics and illustrations that I found on Pixabay. I sort of like made it my own in a way and I really, really do like them. I also made this illustration of me sitting and sipping coffee in my balcony in Bangkok when I had red hair and I miss my red hair so much. I made several variations of it. I changed the color of the t-shirt that I was wearing. I changed the color of the mug. In some variations, I even had black hair and I did it with a freehand sketching and sort of this, um, I think it was sort of like a mix of chalk paint and very, very thick pen option for this design as well as with some watercolors. I really played around with it. I really, really did. I also made this illustration of my best friend's dog, Barney, 
And I did a very, very slim freehand sketching as well as very, very frail watercolor options as if they're like fading away because that's the style that you wanted. And for a while there, I was thinking about selling these things on Etsy and I've done multiple manipulations and multiple features of different dogs and different aspects and really wanted to open this sort of personalized shop on Etsy to sell dog portraits. And the reason why I haven't kept on through is because once I wanted to start it, it came a time, I think it was like two months that my health was really bad. And I kept on thinking that if someone's going to order now, I probably won't be able to fulfill it in time which is why I keep on, I think, going into the whole passive income stream. Because if you're doing passive income and basically the money that comes in has no relations and correlations to doing something after. Like, for example, if someone orders one of these dogs, I will have to make it after they pay for it. And what happens if I'm not feeling well? But if I'm an affiliate marketer and I market someone who does this thing, then whenever someone orders it, I get commission. I don't need to do anything. The same is with Breadbubble. You make the work before and then you upload it. And if someone buys it, you basically don't have any work because you just get the commission at hand, which is why I also set up the goal for myself to be more like to be 100% passive income in 2022 and not rely on clients. Because I still do get clients from time to time to do graphic design work, to do website building. And it's something that I want to stop to better take care of my health. And YouTube is a big part of it. And we're sort of <laughs> getting off topic here. We will talk a lot more about passive income on the 28th of the month, where I will be taking you to one of my favorite hills here in Vansko and do the entire video from the outside. But for this video for today, let me just go back to the center. For this video for today, I kind of want you to get these few ideas of what you can do. So you can go ahead and find a bunch of photos of fashion, of travel, of homes, of various different things and just outline them to create beautiful coloring pages and a coloring book. You can also color them and you can also sort of color them and then reduce the lines and then it will be like sort of this abstract painting of something. And you can also color them, leave the line on and sell them as printable wall art, sell them on greeting cards and basically create new art from photos. You can do it to your own photos, you can do it to other people's photos on Pixabay if they are licensed for it, which on Pixabay they are. The second thing that you can do with it is to create custom coloring pages for people who will send you their photos and you would outline them and create coloring pages and coloring books for them, whether you'll be doing it as a printable, downloadable version using Etsy or Payhip or Shopify, or integrate your Shopify store with Lulu for making physical pages, or just flat out sell these coloring books on KDP. You can also create an Etsy shop for personalized illustration from photo sort of portraits. And the best way for me to help you with this is to tell you to go right now to Etsy and write down custom portrait from photo or dog portrait or wedding portrait and see all the options, all the things that people do, entire illustration types, so many people who do so many amazing things. And some of these illustrations are sold as printable items, as digital downloads. So someone would send you a photo and you would send them a file back. Some of these sort of integrate with print-on-demand services by making it on a canvas or even making them on pillows or even socks or stickers or whatever people want. And it's a really good way to have a good personalized product. It's just all about making your system into it. If you want to know more about how to create an Etsy shop for selling either physical or digital download items of custom portraits using this system, please let me know and I will add that video onto the June list, which is rapidly expanding and I kind of wish June had like 50 days because I have so many video ideas for June. It's nuts. And one last thing that you can do with these designs is actually create your own clip art and sell it as clip art, which is something that you can do because it's pretty cool, pretty amazing. Like for what I did with the Corgi, I can do it with multiple dog breeds and then just sell it on Creative Fabrica or on Etsy as a clip art set that people can use for commercial or personal purposes. And we are pretty much done with this video for today. I hope you had fun watching it and seeing all these possibilities. And I hope that in your mind, you can also start seeing possibilities of what you can do with this technique and sort of like with these graphics or coloring pages or whatever you want to be doing. I will be seeing you guys in two days on the 26th of the month with a Shopify video tutorial on how to set up your digital download shop on Shopify using greeting cards as a digital download product, even though you can do it with pretty much any digital download product. The day after that on the 27th, I'm going to take coloring books, my 
Printable coloring books and upload them onto Payhip and show you how to use their system to basically create a mini shop, an instant mini shop that doesn't cost you money to sit up and have people being able to download your coloring books after giving you money. It's a very good system for creating digital downloads and I'm also using it for my channel for channel donations. So if you want to go to my Payhip account with a link down below to it, you can go ahead and purchase a digital download item, which is five photos of Bansko and a thank you letter for me for $5. This is donation for the channel that you guys actually offered me, which is super cool of you guys to offer me to do this like donations to the channel box. The day after that, on the 28th, we're gonna be talking about the meaning of passive income. And on the 30th, we will have shop reviews for Etsy. But keep on sending me these other shop reviews for your other stores with the Google form down below where you can submit your shop because there will be a lot more shop reviews coming up in the month of June for all shop types, even Shopify, Redbubble, Society6, whatever you guys want. Please like this video if you found it useful because every time you do, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video, I'm gonna show it to more people. And subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you again to 2,000 people who for some reason chose to subscribe to me rambling about art, which is so awesome, so amazing and super, super humbling. Thank you so much for this. I would not have been able to make this journey successful for me without you guys. I'm also thinking about making like a YouTube video about different ways where people can make money from YouTube, not just from this type of content. Please let me know if that is something that is interesting to you. With that being said, that is it from me for today. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know exactly what I'm about to say right now because the live chat is gonna go away in three, two, one, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.